generally for us quarter one is a muted quarter in fact over the last years you would have seen the quarter one we have shown degrowth sequentially from quarter four to quarter one this year we've been able to hold it there basically our deposits are coming very strong as you could see like 39 percent year on year growth uh, so uh, and we don't need that many deposits anymore last time we have given the guidance that our gross np will be five percent but we have already achieved 4.98 percent in the first quarter itself as you know this was the election quarter and we didn't have too much of activity happening in the uh, government procurement sector which actually drives some of our oem sales sharpest strategies top market trends unmatched perspectives the trading day's most comprehensive roundup stay ahead with nse closing bell broadcasting live from the cnbc tv 18 motilal oswald studios in mumbai Well, that is the list of top managements that you saw through the course of the day here. It's all about earnings. It's all about individual single stocks and uh, some of the sort of, uh, you know, best top movers uh, today as we played out those sound bites for you. We'll do more of that over the next 60 minutes. So, so this is Closing Bell. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Mothir Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant Budbi. My colleague Surabhi and Reema and Nigel is joining us from the newsroom floor. Guys, I got off now. Hi, it was good also, Hi, it was also about getting so close to 25,000 on the Nifty. The high today was 24,999.8. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just when you think that uh, laws of it's gravity done. don't apply to this market, suddenly then you get some validation. There's, you know, there's, some, there's something called gravity. So I think uh, just that 0.2% shy of 25,000, that's when the selling came in. Nigel. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, good things you have to wait sometimes, right? So <laughs> wait a little bit longer. Good things are coming, but maybe wait a little bit longer. Some patience. Patience always, uh, you know, when you're expecting some good things. So I guess uh, I'll take it in the stride. Well, uh, that's as close, right? I mean, I actually thought it was the high was about 24, 994 or something. Actually, it's not. It's 99. 99.8. 999.8. <laughs> that's how close we got. I remember with the bank nifty at one of these uh, yeah. many thousand points that happened. It's also Same thing had happened. 0.1, 0.2 uh, percent. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, almost there for all practical purposes. But anyway, uh, the market uh, taking a sm small cut. I mean, actually, as we were walking in, the market the nifty was showing about a 50, 60 point cut. Now, that's also been bought back into. We're down just about 10 points. So, uh, there's a very flat kind of a screen going on. But mid caps and small caps is another picture entirely. I mean, those indices are up between three quarters to 1%. Uh, and uh, that'll come up on your screen, 1% of the mid cap index. And I think uh, same, same for the uh, small cap uh, space as well, just under 1%. PSU Bank Index is the biggest gainer. It was up 3% in the morning. It's, it's up about 25 now. Uh, post the PNB numbers, I mean, there are B Bob and SBI, which are yet to report as far as the largest banks, PSU banks go. Uh, real estate and CPSC, government stocks is another area which is doing very well. Uh, and on the downside, FMCG is seeing some profit booking. And IT, which had such a sharp move on, fri on Friday, uh, you know, that is, uh, IT index, I think, was up one and a half, two percent That is uh, down a little bit uh, as well. So uh, that's an interesting space, really. Stocks like Emphasis and all sort of blew the lights out. Not the earnings, but the stocks. And Emphasis is actually one of the big volume-led losers on the downside. The last I checked was down about 4%. So lots to discuss here over the next 60 minutes. Reema. Hi. The story is also in the banking stocks today. The Nifty Bank, at its day high, was up more than 1,100 points. And now it's up only about 200 points. So quite a bit of a come off coming through for the Nifty Bank. Now up close to about 0.4%. That said, individual banks, some of them, like a Bandhan Bank, that's up close to about 13% right now. The slippages have halved for the company. Very strong asset quality and plus the stock's been an underperformer. City Union Bank is up close to about 6%. Outside of that, oil marketing companies have come in for buying. So BPCL, IOC, HPCL, railway stocks are higher. So RVNL has an 8.5% gain. IRFC is up close to about 5%. And in that PSU basket, you've got numbers like BEL. Uh, decent numbers and the stock is up 3.5-4%. Yeah, some of those numbers have been uh, well received by the market. Uh, and some of the banks as well, I mean, uh, while, of course, PSUs anyway have a lot of momentum behind them today, uh, the ones like uh, PNB reacting to numbers, uh, Whirlpool, another name reacting to numbers on the positive side, Zen Technologies up about 5%. So these are the smaller stocks that have done well. Just want to point out here that the VIX has increased quite a bit today. The VIX has spiked up almost 7% in this yo-yo move that we've had in the market, which is not what this market's used to almost. 
Uh, yeah, that's the India VIX, 6, 6.5% on the higher side. So let's see which way this goes, because uh, while mid-caps are having a, having a good day as usual, the fact that banks could not uh, hold on to the gains, that you know, big follow-through move, it looked like a big momentum day for banks, and then things turned around. So yeah, that fall has been sharp and swift. Uh, let's see where we finally end. But yeah, volatility is spiking. That, for me, stands out as the hallmark of the day. Nigel. Well, that's right. You know, and it's still a stock-specific market. You pull up the intraday chart of strides. That one's bursting away as we speak, 4.5% higher. BEL came out with its set of numbers. That as well is at the high point of the day. And the Aditya Birla retail fashion, well, that stock has spiked up. The one that we're waiting for is ACC. And that one, in fact, is looking a little bit nervous ahead of its numbers. That's moved to the low point of the day. I think the numbers should be around the corner. We should be expecting them anytime soon. For the time being, though, let's get in Mitesh back into the conversation. Well, Mitesh, we were bracing for the 25,000 mark, bells, claps, you know, excitement, but uh, missed it by a whisker. Uh, what's your view on the Nifty? I mean, tell us the support levels. The 20 DMA is still close to 400 points away from current levels. So what's the near-term support? Yeah. So I think, Nigel, uh, one... Um... There is a lot of all uh, open interest at the 25,000 strike, you know, about 90 lakhs plus is the open interest. So I think one, it was psychological level two, uh, I think, you know, there's call right, uh, open interest. So some supply and some, you know, uh, selling was expected. Uh, I was saying that if we get past 25,000, then I think we'll see another four, 500 points. I think that seems to have taken a break at least for a day or so, but uh, we haven't turned negative as yet. So we'll just, uh, you know, uh, keep watching the index and uh, trade only about 25,000, 10, 20 levels once those levels are being captured and then see how it goes from there. Uh, on the stock side, uh, Gujarat Gas is something, you know, uh, which I like. Uh, 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 that's a stock which is uh, making a fresh high. So buy here with a stop at 654 and a target of 690 can be looked at. And uh, BEL, I think you just mentioned that as well. Uh, that's uh, done well today. The intraday charts are turning slightly positive. So BEL is a buy with a stop at uh, 314 and a target of 332 can be looked at. Okay. All right. Uh, got it. Thanks very much for that. And they will come back to you for some more thoughts. Uh, we have uh, Deepan Mehta uh, joining in, uh, Director Alexa Equities. Deepan, thanks so much. It's been a complete flurry of earnings. We'll talk about Bandhan in more specific detail in just a bit. We'll have Sudarshan to sort of revise the numbers for us as well. But overall, what have you made of the kind of move that we've seen in banks? Of course, there's a lot of volatility, but still the likes of a JNK, etc., uh, getting a big thumbs up from the market. I mean, is this more about market move uh, and mood and momentum? Or uh, are there certain, you know, earning stars that stand out for you in what we saw over the weekend? Yes, yeah, Sabhi, good afternoon and thank you for having me on your show. See, by and large, I think banks and BFCs have disappointed in this earnings quarter as they did the last time round as well. There are a few outliers, of course, like JNK Bank, I thought came with very good set of numbers. And earlier in the, earlier in the earnings season, Bank of Maharashtra also, PSU Bank came with very good set of numbers. But by and large, I think it's the same story what we saw last quarter, that net interest margins and net interest incomes have slowed down. And now I think the base effect is catching up as far as provisioning is concerned. So your and your provisions are much higher for a whole host of banks and uh, NBFCs, which is having a direct effect on the net profit. And just that because valuations are attractive and cheap stock prices haven't fallen further. But uh, this particular trend will continue till we don't have some you know, liquidity easing up and banks are able to raise deposits uh, in a far more, um, I would say, uh, you know, a significant manner than what they are doing just now. So it's best to remain more or less neutral. Uh, another outlier which came out with very good set of numbers is Chola Mandalam, I thought very good set of numbers from that. And Shiram uh, Finance as well, uh, considering that both of these are focused on vehicle finance, I think that's one segment which has done very well in the entire bank and BFC space. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I mean, and some of the managements, Chola, and for instance, and even Shiram was talking to both the managements and they're very sanguine about Miners hiccups here and there in asset quality, saying it's seasonal. Both of them saying the second half of the year is going to be very, very strong. And the market's like that. And these are managements that have always delivered very well on execution. So that explains it. But let's come to Bandhan now, actually, and try and understand what happened that sparked a 10% move on the stock today. Uh, you can cut it whichever way you want. I mean, yes, uh, slippages have fallen. 
but at the same time, the gross NPA level is slightly higher. So let's get Sur to you know put it all together for us, the numbers, the word on the street and the management commentary, because we did speak with them in the morning as well. So Darshan, what a move, 13%. That's correct. So it has moved almost up to 16% and is set for the biggest single day gain in nearly four years, that is since April 2020. And after the strong earnings on management commentary is positive, in the interview to CNBC TV18, company says it sees advances picking, picking up in the next three quarters and it is largely out of pandemic issues and loan growth it expects in the range of 16 to 18%. And on the NIM front, it says it will be in the range of 7 to 7.5%. But now the question what will be the next triggers in the coming months? So I can find out two triggers. First is appointment of the new MD and CEO. And second, if company manages to get any cre credit guarantee fund. On the brokerage front, most of the brokerages remain bullish. CLSA has an outperform call with a target of rupees 240 per share. It says it went to results with muted expectations on asset quality, but it was positively surprised and it sees loan growth largely coming in the second half and has raised profit estimates by 5 to 7%. JP Morgan 2 has an overweight call with a target of rupees 260 per share. It says asset quality performance was better than estimate in a seasonally weaker Q1 and overall gross slippages fell below 3% after 14 quarters. Kotak Institutional Equities has a buy call with a target of rupees 250 per share. It says healthy earnings growth led by operating profit growth and decline in provisions and it finds risk reward favorable at the current valuations. I think that last line, Sudarshan, that you mentioned, I think that really sums it up, right? Look at the stock in a market which has seen stocks go up 500, 600, 7 percent. You get one mover, which is absolutely flat, and maybe the market wants to latch on to it. Thanks so much. Uh, that's today. Let's look at a one-year chart on Bandhan, and then come all these statements with the promise of better asset quality, good growth, uh, and therefore the you know stock price targets, a lot of them around uh, 240, 250, 260. That's, that, I think, could explain a lot. Very quickly, uh, Deepan, are you convinced on Bandhan? I think there's a good trading rally in Bandhan. It may continue for a few more months. But just want to add one line here that Bandhan's numbers should be seen in the context that other microfinance companies like, uh, uh, you know, um, the other microfinance companies by and large haven't really delivered, uh, like Credit Access and Spandana. And Bandhan Bank, which has a large exposure to um, uh, microfinance, they have come out with good set of numbers. From that point of view, it is quite impressive. And look, the stock is trading extremely cheap. You can always justify a higher PE multiple. The <clears throat> stock is trading at one and a half times price to book. So relatively very inexpensive compared to the rest of the pack. Uh, so that's uh, Kotak Institutional Equities valuation, one and a half times price to book. But uh, Sudarshan is still with us. PSU banks are also big gainers today on the back of PNB numbers. Uh, take us through that. That's correct. So amongst all the PSU banks that have reported earnings so far, PNB has reported the strongest set of earnings. NI and operating profit were up 10% each year on year and profit was up 160% year on year and 6% sequentially. On the asset quality front, slippages have fallen 20% sequentially to rupees 1755 crore and gross NPO is down 9% and net NPA has fallen 13% sequentially. In the ratio, gross NPA is coming at 4.98% versus 5.73% in the last quarter. In the interview to CNBC TV18, PNB says ROA of 1% can be achieved before exit of fiscal FY25 and NPAs and credit cost company expects to reduce further from the current levels and NIM guidance company says it will be in the range of 2.93% and it basically it maintains the same for the financial year 2025. But brokerages remain cautious on the stock. Morgan Stanley has an underweight call with a target of is 80 per share. It says SMA 1 and 2 appears elevated 2.5% and it will be key to watch going forward. City has a sell call with a target of is 105 per share. But after PNB earnings, next uh, we'll focus on SBI and BOB. BOB is reporting earnings on July 31st and SBI coming Saturday, that is August 3. wonder why all the... Thanks so much for that. Uh, guys, I wonder why all the big banks have chosen to report numbers on a Saturday, right? I think it was HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, now even State Bank of India. So it's, it's a busy Saturdays ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, busy, busy Saturdays. Uh, Deepan uh, is still with us. Deepan, any thoughts uh, on... Uh, uh, you know, if you want to talk, comment on, uh, sort of, uh, add to anything what Sud said, uh, please uh, feel free. But REC also reported numbers. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, a non-stop rally in REC, PFC is kind of uh, ended. 
Uh, it does rally once in a while, but uh, has generally has been strong. Uh, even today, it's up about two and a half, three percent or so. Numbers were uh, pretty good. Uh, no NPL, so uh, so to speak, uh, really uh, over the last many quarters actually now. Any thoughts here? Well, I think it's the same thing. Uh, that valuations are attractive and growth rates may pick up for both PFC and REC. Uh, there's a lot of investment taking place uh, in the power industry and uh, therefore the demand for uh, loans certainly do, do look up for these two companies. And in a way, I think they don't have an NPA problem because a lot of them are backed by a lot of the loans are have kind of a sovereign uh, guarantee. Uh, they lend mainly to the public sector or to the government uh, department. So from that point of view, it's pretty safe. It's just that in the past, the growth rates were very, very feeble and volume and um, performance was very volatile. But now I think uh, going forward, you could have secular growth uh, in both these companies, which is why I think Street has uh, bid up the prices over there and valuation multiples also have expanded. But if you look at the entire bank NBFC space, I think this quarter has been the quarter of the laggards. Like say, Bandhan Bank has done extremely well, GNK Bank, maybe a Bank of Maharashtra, PNB. So the the companies which have not, the banks and NBS which have not done well over the past several years, now they are coming back with, I would say, a great deal of uh, force and good trading rallies taking place over there. But end of the day, the entire bank NBFC is overowned sector. It has a very large weightage in most portfolios. So from that point of view, one needs to be a bit careful. Mm. Uh, Dipan, what about Mankind Pharma and its acquisition of Bharat Serum Vaccines? It's been about two days, you know, enough for digestion of uh, the news. It's a good asset they've acquired, very strong, very synergistic. Um, it makes sense over the long term. But the argument is that Mankind is overpaying for it because they are paying seven to eight times on its revenue. Uh, which is much higher than the other pharmaceutical deals, which happen at four or five times revenues. Um, so, uh, you know, weigh in on Mankind Pharma, because on Friday, the stock opened higher, Mankind, and then ended in the red, and today it's absolutely flat. Yeah, Rima, I'm very positive on this particular transaction. Uh, the reason is that we have a longer-term view. Uh, maybe next couple of years, maybe a bit of a stress on uh, Mankind Pharma's balance sheet. But going ahead, I think it's a great acquisition. It's a profitable company. It fills in a lot of niches which were missing in Mankind Pharma. And if you go back into the history of all the acquisitions which have taken place in the domestic pharma industry, by and large, I think they've been very successful, although they may have overpaid for it. And one bad example, of course, is Ranbaxy acquisition by Sun Pharma. But by and large, I think domestic acquisitions have worked out very well for pharma companies. And I think this one will work out very well for Mankind Pharma as well. There's concern around higher debt, but look, you know, the balance sheet can certainly take that much debt and the profits can uh, easily service the interest. So very positive on Mankind Pharma. It's a company in which we and our clients are invested. So to that extent, our views could be biased. Okay, so positive on Mankind. Uh, Devan, before we let you go, I just have one last stock to discuss, and that is BEL. Let's uh, get the stock up. It's around 3 percent 3 I think, higher. And the numbers have come in. Numbers look good. Uh, the revenue is up 20%. The EBITDA has jumped 41%. The margin has also improved. The margin has moved up from about 90-odd percent to over 22%. So it's been a really good quarter for BEL. Now consider the stock price. Two years ago, same time, uh, July of 2022, this was a 100 rupees stock. Now it's a 300 rupees stock. So Deepan, my question is that the kind of performance you're seeing, uh, let's say what they've done this quarter, is it enough to keep fueling a further up move? Should you be still buying? I mean, it's good. Execution seems to be happening. But the question is, you need to map that with the kind of rise in stock prices, 100 to 300 already. How do you approach a stock like BEL? Yeah, so we again a stock in which we and our clients are invested. And uh, you know, we are just remaining invested because at these elevated levels to buy, you are paying just too much for a business. Price to earnings multiple uh, is at all time high. But thankfully, the numbers also have come through. So wait for a correction if you want to buy into the stock, 15-20% uh, correction whenever it is there. And uh, that would you know, provide a, a risk return in your favor and some sort of margin of safety. So existing investors remain invested for a fresh investment. I think buyer declines. But the key figure here is the order book position. I have not seen that. And if order book position also has improved, which means that the earning visibility remains pretty much stable. Okay. All right, uh, Deepan, thank you very much. Uh, good chatting with you as always. Thanks for taking out the time and being with us today. We do have to take a very quick break on that note. Come back on the other side and we'll also have with us uh, Rupen Rajguru of uh, Julius Bear uh, to talk about the market and the way ahead.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, you know, basically you've got the market which is uh, up, what, 15 points. It's flat on the Nifty. Uh, and I think you've got uh, the Sensex which is not doing very much. Large caps, by the way, quiet, quieter. Uh, but broader markets are, are doing just fine. Uh, Rupen Rajguru is with us, Head of Equity Investment and Strategy at Julius Baer. Uh, Rupen, good to have you with us here. Thanks for your time. You know, we had a slew of numbers over the last three days, uh, post-Friday uh, to uh, till now. What has caught your eye and uh, what uh, to your mind, deserves a bit of a re-rating, deserves a bit of a move, trading-wise or otherwise. Bandhan, for example, is seeing a big move. Uh, you know, you've got a few others like PNB, which are seeing large rallies. What caught your eye? Yeah, hi. Uh, afternoon, Prashant. Uh, so, look, before I get into that, uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that we are in a bull market. So, any small catalyst can lead to a very high or disproportionate movement in the stock price. Uh, having said that, uh, in fact, this entire quarterly numbers, if you look through, what we believe that the pace of earnings growth, which has been phenomenal for last four years, which was upwards of 20% compounding for Nifty, is definitely slowing down. And we have to be cognizant of that fact. Uh, having said that, uh, what we are seeing is, you know, while it's very difficult to pinpoint a unique theme uh, which has emerged because I think a lot of corporates are yet to announce their numbers, uh, but uh, some of the companies, especially say companies in the insurance side or in the IT side, uh, what is happening is that uh, there are incremental, some positive catalysts which we are witnessing in the, uh, you know, in the results as well as uh, also in the you know, uh, management commentary and hence we are seeing some bit of uh, uh, re-rating or I would say some bit of mean reversion happening into those sectors. I think still early days, I think banking and financial as a whole, uh, the commentary is okay, uh, NIM compression is manageable uh, and, and uh, uh, so far no complaints as such. Uh, earnings from the banks have been mixed, right, uh, Rupen, afternoon. Uh, you've had misses from Kotak, uh, you've had a miss from HDFC, I mean, average performance from HDFC Bank. But on the other hand, ICICI Bank has been a solid set of numbers. And then some of the PSUs like PNB have backed it up. And now there is increasingly conversation on even the asset quality on the unsecured loans. Credit costs for some banks has gone up. So the picture is a bit mixed. Uh, what is the earnings visibility on banks going forward? Yeah, afternoon, Rima. Uh, so, uh, from a banking and financials perspective, and specifically uh, in bank, and I would break it up into uh, public sector as well as private sector banks. Uh, so, you are right. Uh, some of the private sector banks have uh, probably, you know, uh, on the slippages count, uh, they have uh, uh, been a slight disappointment. But at, at an aggregate level, you know, as we speak, the entire private sector, and even if I were to include public sector bank, the credit costs are at its lowest. So uh, here, I would say uh, the RBI also, um, time and again, uh, you know, they have come out with various regulations which are kind of uh, sounding off that they are not very happy with the kind of credit growth which we are witnessing, especially in the unsecured side. Uh, so net-net, I would say from a banking perspective, and I think that is also reflecting in the uh, banking stock prices, uh, as, as, as a whole, we believe uh, that uh, still uh, private sector banks, the large private sector banks are better placed, uh, while public sector banks' numbers might be good, but uh, we believe the best of credit cost is now behind us, incrementally uh, going ahead, not necessarily in this quarter, but the credit cost will, uh, which has been unusually lower for them as compared to their historical average, will kind of inch up. And plus, more and more regulatory requirement will, uh, will be there moving towards ECL. Uh, also, you know, some higher provisioning on standard assets on project financing and all will impact uh, public sector more than private sector banks. So net net, we believe uh, from here on uh, between the two, private sector banks are better off vis uh, public sector banks. Okay, all right. Hi, Rupen. Good afternoon. It's a while, I think, since we chatted, but good to see you in. Well, there are two sectors that I'm looking at. One is cement because, you know, that's my code beat and there's a lot of consolidation going on there. But it appears you're on the side that believes in the near term that could be pain. Longer term, all this consolidation talk will help. And the other one I'm looking at is autos. You have Ola Electric that's coming out uh, with the IPO. But you're cautious on both these two sectors. Give us a few points on why. Sure. Yeah, hi. Afternoon, uh, Michael. Uh, so cement is a very interesting play. Uh, no, in fact... Uh, uh, the largest cement player is 
operating at 90% plus capacity. And on an average, the sector, cement sector is operating at 85, 90% capacity utilization. Despite that, we have seen the prices being soft. For last two quarters, if I were to sum up, the prices are down around 5 to 6%. So what does that indicate? The heightened competitive intensity. Uh, and that is here to stay. And in fact, uh, the erstwhile or the disrupt, so-called disruptor uh, hasn't even increased their capacity utilization. Uh, so the largest incumbent is uh, no, uh, clearly doing a lot of m and and also the second uh, largest player. So net-net, uh, to answer your question, because of the lower realization, you know, in fact, you know, earlier a quarter back, we were penciling that the margin trajectory of cement companies would be uh, higher this quarter but because of you know, quarter one also prices have been soft so the overall EBITDA per uh, ton for cement companies will go down in fact this quarter you know will be below 1950 at an industry level so quarter one and quarter two the EBITDA per ton still will be lower and in second half onwards we might again see it going inching up higher so to answer your question tactically for next one two quarters we are cautious on cement but the m a play would be there so any companies which are less than hundred dollars per ton if they are a takeover target you might see an action out there so it's uh, very difficult to pinpoint which would be there but those uh, companies will be in korea and those companies will see some uh stock price momentum but over next two three years uh, perspective we are constructive on that sector but in the near term as i said the earnings uh, will be disappointing for quarter one and probably in quarter two as well uh, moving to auto, uh, auto, uh, no, for last six quarters in a row have seen, you know, phenomenal results and overall they are, you know, we have also seen a margin expansion story also happening through, uh, volume growth also coming through. In fact, this quarter also the earnings growth uh, for an auto uh, sector per se will be upwards of 15%, but the rate of growth will be the lowest uh, which we have seen in last four or five quarters. And I think the, uh, the only reason why we are cautious or you know, on that sector is because you know there is hardly any scope of re-rating. All the sectors, all the stocks are uh, valued uh, to perfection. While the IPO, as you rightly said, one of the uh, electric uh, two-wheeler, largest electric two-wheeler uh, uh, IPO is there uh, probably next week. And in a few months, we will see the also one of the largest IPO, uh, Hyundai hitting the street, so which will keep some excitement. But I think on valuation from here on, we don't see you know, a uh, big upside. So probably in the near term, we would want the stock prices to see some kind of, uh, if not price correction, at least time correction for one or two quarters before we get constructed with that. Right. Uh, Rupen, just uh, stay on with us. I know that power is a sector that you like and we want to know more about that. Uh, so let, let's actually look at one of the companies that has reported numbers today, IEX, and the stock has been doing really well after those numbers came out. So let's uh, get in the fine print with Vivek. Vivek, tell us more. Well, that's right. So, IX came out with its results, you know, last week and the company over the weekend actually held the analyst call. And in the analyst call, you know, there are some key takeaways that have made uh, most of the analysts in the street uh, increasingly positive as far as the prospects of IX are concerned. Uh, first up, you know, what the company has said is that, uh, number one, they are confident of retaining and maintaining close to 17 to 18 percent year-on-year growth. Uh, they say that the volume growth is being seen from increasing supply availability, favorable regulations and also a new product pipeline. Now, the most important part as far as IX is concerned, something that we've been talking about quite a while, is the fact that, you know, the imminent coming up of market coupling. However, you know, in the analyst meet, what IEX has said, and remember, you know, the final decision is with the regulator, not with IEX. Uh, the company has said that Grid India, that is NLDC, is yet to go ahead and complete the development of the software to run the testing pilot as yet. So, you know, there appears to be a significant delay even in the testing process before there could be an, uh, going ahead and implementation of market coupling. Now, along with that, uh, the company says the risk of uh, a company reiterated that it does not see any merit in market coupling and IFL today has gone ahead and upgraded the stock to a buy rating from the earlier ad that they have. They have a target price of 205 rupees a share. They are saying that, number one, the initiatives to start other exchanges like the gas exchange, the coal exchange and carbon exchange will drive further volume and they believe that the delay of uh, you know, all of the initiatives to go ahead and implement market company is something that bodes quite favourably as far as IX is concerned. Mm, okay, got it. Uh, thanks, Vivek, so much for that. Explain some of the excitement around the stock. Uh, that is IEX. IEX is up about 52% in the last one year. If you look at the power universe, some of the generators have actually done better. Tata Power, NTPC, these stocks are up about 70 to 80%. CESC has done even better, 120% thereabouts. 
So now, Rupen, let's come to your rationale uh, behind why you still like power, what segment of it are you looking to play, uh, and how do you find valuations now? Yeah, hi, afternoon, Surbhi. Uh, so uh, the power is a sector, again, it's a long uh, uh, cyclical sector, and you know, what we witnessed between, say, 2008 and 2015, uh, in which a lot of new capacity got added, uh, but the uh, demand was not higher, so supply was much higher than the demand, uh, which led to probably into you know, 16, 17, the you know, utilization of a lot of the thermal powers went down to as low as 50, 55 percent uh, on the PLF side. And majority of the capacity addition happened in the, in the renewables post that. So what happened in last two years, you know, we have seen that entire trend reversing. Uh, wherein the demand has gone up and the supply, especially on the thermal side, was hardly 3-4% and demand was growth was 6-7%. Uh, so there was a clear dearth of uh, the uh, power uh, which we are witnessing in India. And hence, we are clear, again seeing a, a gush of new investments also in the thermal side along with uh, the uh, renewable side. So the entire value chain, if you see recollect in the previous cycle, the entire value chain got benefited. And that is exactly what we are seeing right now. So starting with the utilities to also the companies which are into the TND side, you know, uh, uh, players who do you know, BTG, EPC, or uh, some of the companies which are into transformers, all are seeing, you know, order book being uh, kind of full. So the entire value chain is, you know, uh, and, 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 and that's reflected in numbers as well. They all are, are declaring very strong numbers. Uh, plus, the financiers also are, are doing well. Uh, so, net net, uh, no, uh, yes, the big question now is valuation because everything is getting reflected. But still, I would say uh, on the utility side, companies have gone up. You know, their valuation now are at 15 to 18 times multiple on the price to earnings and say around two times price to book. But uh, we'll have around 12, 13 percent, you know, the easily growth visibility for next four to five years. So, they are kind of valued fully, but still, I would say in a, in a in a market, you know, where growth is uh, no, not necessarily happening across the board, these kind of uh, themes where the growth is still uh, strong and visible uh, with the regulated equity, especially on the utility side, they uh, look pretty interesting. Uh, my, yes, we have to be mindful that the return expectation has to be much lower than what we have witnessed in the last few years. Mm. Rupin, can you tell us uh, what have you, <coughs> I mean, what have you guys bought into last? I mean, uh, incrementally, what have you added in? Uh, so, I Prashant, I refrain from uh, getting into individual uh, uh, stocks, uh, but uh, as I had uh, mentioned uh, last time around, uh, as a segment which we like, uh, you know, is uh, the general insurance segment uh, where we have uh, added exposure, as well as uh, some of the you know, capital market intermediaries is something which we have been liking and uh, which we have been you know, uh, adding for last uh, you know, few quarters or so. so. These are some okay. of the themes in which we have increased our exposure. All right. Uh, actually, uh, I say, say Lombard, uh, apart from the life insurers, uh, is the, actually out of insurers, life and general, Lombard has seen the highest amount of earnings upgrades in this quarter across the board. Uh, so that stands out purely from an earnings standpoint. Stocks also, I think, done well uh, around the, I mean, from the time the earnings season started. So 1970 on I say, say Lombard. Okay, the market's down about, what, 30, 32 odd points or so. Rupin, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. We'll take a quick commercial break here. We'll come back with what's happening in dealing rooms on D Street Chatter with Nimesh. We'll get you some te technical trading ideas as well uh, that's coming up.
Welcome back. Well, we thought we would be celebrating 25,000 odd, but that's not to be. The good news is still the breadth of the market is in favor of the bulls. Well, good time to get in Nimesh, who's going to give us an insight into what's going on in D Street Chatter. Well, Nimesh, it appears a bit of a breather. We almost got, effectively, we got yeah. to 25,000 odd. But we've pulled back a little bit. What's the flow picture looking like? Well, you know, it's a bit of a choppy day of trade. Of course, we've, we've corrected from the from the day's high. I guess there is a bit of algo-based selling which has emerged at high level. So there are some you know technical factors because of which we've seen some bit of profit booking at that 25,000 level mark on the Nifty. But you know, broadly, the sense is uh, uh, don't don't lose sight on the geopolitical risk as well. That has not been a big talking point in dealing rooms as well. Look at what what's going to happen with Israel, and maybe you know that could have a bit of a impact in terms of adding volatility to the Indian market. So that's something to, to, to track as far as geopolitical risk is concerned. From a flow perspective, again, it's a mixed day of trade. Uh, we've been seeing a bit of uh, buying emerging from both domestic and FIs of late. Again, in today's trade, the sense I'm getting is that there is a bit of buying in the PSO bank stock. So that's one space which is well bid. And rightly so, because they've relatively out outperformed in terms of earnings this mm. quarter compared to the private banks, uh, private bank names. For the August series, of course, earnings are going to be a big, uh, big trigger to watch out for. But also, uh, mid of August, we're going to see the big MSCI uh, you know, rebalancing, which will have a big impact in, in terms of HDFC Bank and overall on the on the uh, uh, India as well. So that's going to add to a bit of uh, buying interest from larger FIs. But you know, the other big trend which is going to emerge, we've already started seeing some signs of it, is the promoter piece, take sell, as in when the earnings get over. Uh, we've already seen few deals uh, got done, and uh, the feedback is there is a very strong pipeline which is going to come as and when you know we see the uh, earnings getting over. So some big big companies are going to see large block deals very soon. Okay, all right. So you've teased us a little bit. Uh, let's get to some of those stocks that you're tracking. Let's get stock specific. Well, you know, so in terms of individual names, the first stock is Adani Energy. It's again back into my chatter list. I spoke about the possibility of the fundraising few days back. Now it looks like it's round the corner. So a large QIP is in the offering. Uh, companies likely to raise between 6,000 to 7,000 crores by QIP very soon. That is an Adani Energy Solutions as the first name. The second stock is IRB Infra. Well, the stock has been consolidating ever since uh, some of the promoted industry sold stake in the last few weeks. But now I understand that the city is anticipating a large order win as well for the company very soon. Also, there is a buzz that there could be another large block in IRB Infra very soon. The third name is uh, a couple of uh, you know cash stocks where there is a bit of buying interest from larger FIs. So, Dudla Dairy and J uh, Jindal. So, both stand out. Large in back of buy flows at FIs. So, expect high delivery volumes in both these names today. And the last is Kotak Mahindra Bank. Well, the city has been a bit positive about Kotak Mahindra Bank, and there's a bit of chatter uh, with regards to the uh, you know, RBI approval as well. Uh, but again, from a flow perspective, there is selling pressure. And again, in today's market, there are sell flows at a leading FI desk in Kotak Mahindra Bank. Okay, got it. Um, thanks very much, Nimesh, for that. So that's the chatter. Mark is very quiet, very flat. Nifty Bank, Nifty, not moving at all. Let's uh, figure out what the final trades could be like for today. We have Mitesh back with us. Mitesh, so what do you make of all of the volatility and the choppiness? Final calls now? Yeah. I think, you know, uh, one uh, doesn't look good in the short term in the sense that, uh, you know, failing around this major level where we also have call open interest means that there could be two series of consolidation. So maybe the upside momentum will see a halt with the today's this thing. But I'm not very negative, so I still like the refinery sector per se. So BPCL is a BTST with a stop at 334 and a target of 343. And IOC is the other one. That's a BTST with a stop at 178 half and a target of 184. Okay, let's get to uh, the big earnings that we're anticipating later in the evening. One of them is Colgate. Manglam joins in with the expectations. Manglam. Well, there's been good momentum behind the Colgate stock and that's largely ever since, you know, the leadership of the company has changed. So, the stock is up nearly 70% of the last one year, trading at around 58 times and the street expects continued results momentum for the company as well. This time around, we're looking at high single-digit revenue growth, close to around 8%. The number you're expecting on the top line is close to around 1,430 crores and the EBITDA grows by about 12.5%, implying a margin improvement of nearly 150 basis points. 31.6% turns into 33% and as a result of which the net profit too grows at around 21%. So three numbers to watch, 8% on the top line, 12.5% on the EBITDA and net profit growth of 21% is what the street is anticipating. 2-3% to volume growth led by 6% price and uh, premiumization growth as well. Rural contributes about 40% to Colgate's overall revenue. So recovery in rural is extremely crucial to track and will be one of the bigger beneficiaries once rural demand comes back. Ad spends are between 13 and 14% of the sales and the company has been leveraging some of those ad spends for their new pro product launches as well. Um, most important this time around will not be the toothpaste business but a small part which is Palmolive. They've had a full range launch so performance of that will be extremely crucial as well because the management has guided 
for uh, Palmolive to grow at twice the pace of Colgate itself. Okay, thank you very much for that. Now let's get you a big corporate, you know, exclusive conversation. We're talking about Sanjeev Goenka, chairman of RP Sanjeev Goenka Group. Um, he chatted with Shireen Pan earlier and he said that they are going to set up three gigawatts of renewables in the next two years. He also went on to say in his conversation that he anticipates a break-even in the FMCG business in the next two years. But let's now talk about CESC, both in terms of demand at this point in time, uh, uh, what's the outlook and if we can get an update from you on what's happening as far as uh, Noida is concerned, what's happening with the Dharival and the Haldia IPP as well. So that's again another space that's going well. So we are investing not only in distribution but we are investing in generation as well. So right now over the next two years we are going to set up three gigawatts of renewables, mm -hmm. which is hybrid between solar and wind. The projects are under execution right now. And this will go into our distribution networks in Calcutta, in Noida, in Rajasthan, in Maharashtra. So uh, we will take them across our distribution networks. And so you, they're profitable, they're green, they're forward looking, and the margin enhancing. So it really works across all the all all parameters. And it's something that we are very excited about. So this is the beginning in the green energy sector. Mm. Uh, three gigawatts to begin with, ultimately going up to ten. Okay. And uh, we will we are looking actively at hydrogen electrolyzers. In terms of capacity addition, uh, you know, as far as CESC is concerned, what should we expect between now and the five-year target? So three gigawatts over the next two years. I think another two in two years thereafter. And another five in two years thereafter. So in six years, about 10 gigawatts. And the kind of investments uh, that it would entail? So it would be about 70,000 crores. Let's talk about FMCG and the plan as far as FMCG is concerned. Where do you get confidence from on what is working for you on the FMCG side? And again, both in terms of investments, in terms of uh, new forays, uh, what is the plan at this point? So the snacking part, the better for you snacking is actually beginning to work. And we are now at about a 600 crore uh, beat rate annually, which is going up every month. Uh, and at this level, we are beginning to see the losses coming down sharply. Okay. We don't yet make profits. We're not expected to make profits at this level. But we can see now the path to 1,000 crores, which is where we start to, to break even. So that foray is actually working well. But when do you anticipate a break even for the FMCG business? I think another two years. And what kind of investments are we still talking about? Are you continuing you, you to make will, investments? You will look, yeah, we will continue to make investments. The losses now would be about 200 crores a year as opposed to 350. So that's a significant reduction. And there will be investments in capacity and products. Uh, so, but overall, I think it's something that's trending very well. Finally, let me uh, ask you about uh, uh, the ambition on the sports side. And we've, of course, been seeing you on, on television in the dugout as well, Mr. Goenka. But, uh, uh, you know, how, how has that bet panned out for you? And more importantly, are you willing to take bigger bets from here on? Well, it's something that's uh, been very successful. Uh, we got the franchise for 7,000 crores. We are reading that Gujarat Titans is getting sold for 12,500 crores. I don't know whether it's true or not, but that's what we read. Uh, and if that is indeed the case, then in two and a half years, 7,000 becoming 12,500 is not bad at all. So would you look at monetizing this in your no, franchise no, no. in any way? No. <laughs> no plans at this point no. in time. <laughs> All right, um, you know, the IPL team is excluded from that. By the way, the Nifty Bank has completely flattened out. Remember when we started the show at 2.30, the Nifty Bank was up 200 points, and now it's just up close to about 30-odd points. So from the day's high, the Nifty Bank uh, has given up more than about 1,000 points. Get into a break. We'll come back and chat more about the markets.
Welcome back. Well, the markets are as flat as can be, but plenty of action in the broader markets. A good time to get in uh, Sudeep Bandupadhyay. Hi, Sudeep. Good afternoon and good to see you, Win. I wanted to ask you about one of these FMCG names. You know, in the last 10 minutes or so, Goodrich Consumer that was trading actually in the red, it's now up close on 2%. So the intraday chart will tell you the picture. But what's the longer, longer term view on this stock? Well, Nigel, I've been positive on this stock for quite some time. I think, uh, you know, the change of management, bringing in the new CEO, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, should have start, worked as a catalyst. It has taken a bit of time, but I think uh, it's high time it starts performing well. Uh, as we know, they have a lot of international businesses. So, uh, you know, the impact of uh, headwinds from international markets sometimes does affect their uh, uh, overall consolidated earnings. But as things uh, are now, I think uh, with good monsoon and rural recovery, uh, we are positive on Godrej consumers. And I think if somebody is uh, kind of uh, looking at a one-year kind of time horizon, they can definitely look at buying into Godrej consumer. It hasn't kind of moved up the way some other FMCG companies have moved up. So for a long-term investor, it's a good buy. But one has to remember that it has got a lot many legs other than only India also. Okay. Uh, got that. That's Godrej consumers. By the way, as we're getting into the final leg of trade, should just look at PSU stocks once again. And all of them are doing the usual jig. IRFC, 7%. RVNL, up 10%. Uh, Aircon, 9.5%. Rights is up 14%. So, Railways uh, has really come back with a bang in terms of just the, the trading uh, action today. Even beyond Railways, look at something like NBCC, 7.5%. Mazgao Dock, up 10%. Uh, once again, a breathless kind of a move on most of these stocks uh, on a day when the market's been a little volatile. Sudeep is with us. Uh, Sudeep, uh, hi, you know the question. We've been asking you this question for many months now. What do you say uh, when you just give these uh, stocks a bit of a breather, a couple of days they sit out and then, you know, just, uh, I mean, daily moves can be so gravity defying. What, what's your advice, even from a trading point of view, would you buy anything now? Well, Subi, I've been looking like a fool on national television again and again. Uh, you know, I've been saying that uh, don't get into the defense stocks and the railway stocks. The valuation is too high. And, uh, you know, uh, they have been rising continuously. So I think people who didn't hear our advice did well. But having said that, I think, uh, you know, I continue to maintain my view that uh, uh, valuation-wise, they, they, they are good companies. They are getting a lot of orders. The government has significant force focus on defense make in India as well as uh, the railway. I think the amount of work happening in multiple areas of railways have never ever happened in India. So this is all good. Uh, and the order book is really, really full and bursting. But the, the problem is some of these orders, why some most of these orders take a lot of time in getting executed. There are challenges in execution also, and we have seen it time and again. So under the circumstances, the valuation definitely looks very rich. Uh, uh, and and for unless you are in for very long, I think it's better to not buy at these levels. And now, if somebody is already an investor, is holding onto these shares, I think by all means continue to enjoy and continue to keep watching the counter. Uh, uh, because there may be, maybe, because the margin of error is very, very limited here. So be very careful if you're holding on to these shares, but keep enjoying. One stock I will mention, which came up with results also, uh, BEL. I think that is one stock where in spite of the valuation, in spite, in spite of the stock moving up about, uh, you know, from 100 to 300 over the last two years, I think I'm still bullish and I would recommend buy for the long-term investor there even now because of the fact that it has been fantastic execution from the company always, and even this quarter, the execution track record is fabulous. The defense, it's, it's a defense electronics company, and the products of this company are, are uh, used by uh, you know, Air, Army, Navy, all the three branches of defense. They are also getting into exports. So I think this is a company which has got many, many legs. And if somebody has to really take a bet on defense, I think defense electronics is the space to be in. And BEL is the space to be. Any other manufacturing related stock uh, you would recommend buying at current levels if someone has a two or three year time horizon? Well, uh, you know, I don't know whether you want to call it manufacturing, but uh, in the power segment, NTPC has been my favorite and it continues to remain my favorite. The traction and the, you know, the, the, the dynamics in power industry has changed in a big way and the demand is strong. Uh, the performance has been very good. Uh, even uh, the, the results announced, I think, uh, you know, the PLF has uh, moved up uh, better than expected. 
the, the, the overall overall business momentum has been significant and it has already a green energy company sitting inside uh, the uh, traditional NTPC. So while Thermal is uh, you know doing great business, the green energy is uh, coming up very well. And at some point in time, value unlocking will definitely reward the shareholders handsomely. Mm. You know, we're talking about power, guys. Look at Voltamp. Uh, Voltamp is up 18%. That's a surge. Numbers came out, I think, in the middle of the... I mean, I think about an hour ago or so. Uh, and look at the reaction on that one. Uh, you know, uh, top line, I think, is up uh, some 30%. Uh, profits are up 56%. Margins have gone up almost 300 basis points. Uh, and uh, that is the... Uh, I mean, that's incredible. Stock's up 120% this uh, year so far. And I think in the last two and a half years, stock is up 10x. Uh, so from 1400, uh, stock's gone to 14,480. Uh, so that is the uh, sort of uh, sort of compounding here, not compounding. Compounding kind of brings in uh, sort of you know, uh, usually you you sort of imagine a slow, steady kind of a, a move every year. Not slow, steady could be fast as well, but this is 10x in two and a half years flat. Uh, so just something which you don't see very often, even in a market like this. So that's uh, whole time for you. Do you track this one, Sudeep? Any thoughts? Well, I think, uh, Prashant, the entire power segment, you look at uh, you know, most of these companies, there has been amazing transformation. Uh, while moving up 10x in two, uh, two and a half years is really something which one has to take a, uh, with a pinch of salt. But the reality is their order book is full. Uh, they are now in a, in a situation where they are, uh, you know, not able to supply and meet the demand. Uh, so that's the situation where they are in. And it's a fantastic position to be in for some of these companies who had suffered for a very, very long time. Uh, so yes, uh, I do track. And I think, uh, you know, it's a fantastic space to be in. I talked about NTPC. You know, the entire power ecosystem is going through a major, major positive move. And I believe strongly that this is going to continue for the next five, 10 years. I think uh, you know power for, uh, has reached every nook and corner of the country. The use of power has increased. The demand of power is soaring. And the transition of green energy is giving an incremental opportunity for some of these component suppliers. OK, all right, uh, Sadeep, indeed. Uh, quite a bit of a move in some of these names. And Voltamp is uh, taking the cake today with that move. Uh, you know, just uh, stay on. We'll uh, do the market trap and come back to you for a longer conversation on markets forward. But for the time being, we're looking at a green screen where the headline is that we couldn't do 25,000 today on the Nifty. But the mid-cap market is alive and kicking and actually uh, completely thriving. Uh, to start off with the Nifty, the, you know, the reason things flattened out is because the banking surge didn't last. The bank Nifty is also quite flat. Having said that, gainers of the day include Divi's Laboratories, about 3% higher, BPCL 3%. LNT had a good session. SBI managed to buck that trend. I mean, most of the other banks flattened out, but Indusind Bank and SBI, they're still closing out in positive. The others, uh, HDFC Bank, for instance, down about a percent. ICICI Bank uh, lost a lot of the momentum. It was up 3% in the morning, but the closing rates are close to just about three-tenths of a percent on the higher side. Reliance managed to close out in positive, about six-tenths of a percent up. Uh, you have stocks like Sriram Finance uh, holding out uh, with some gains. The uh, profit booking side uh, was basically IT and select consumer stocks. So Titan down 2%, ITC down a percent and a half. Uh, and then beyond banks, of course, some of the uh, IT names that didn't do quite well. Uh, bell's gone, but uh, Prashant, more about the, I guess, the mid-cap market once again today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> very, very strong moves across uh, many of these names. Uh, so you mentioned the railway names, RVNL, IRFC, rights, uh, the banking ones, Bandhan, PNB, but there were also Century, uh, City Union Bank, Naraga Bank, which did very well. You know, uh, I mentioned Voltamp, but, uh, uh, you know, you had Mazgao Dock, which was a sharp mover, higher 10%. There was KNR Construction, which was a very big mover. Uh, Keynes, which reported numbers with the management with us. NBCC did very well today. Uh, you had uh, some of these consumer names, Rupa, Liberty Shoes, uh, saw very big moves. Uh, you know, some of these wealth management companies uh, coming through. Uh, so, Novama, which reported numbers, uh, super performance, 361 did very well. Uh, and then you had names like EID, Paddy, CAMS. I could go on, uh, but you get an idea about uh, the broader market strength that we had today. Market breadth, really strong uh, once again, uh, with about 1,600 stocks higher and about uh, 1,100 stocks which were lower. So, not completely one way, not very, very one sided, but uh, comfortably in the green as far as market breadth is concerned. We'll Take your leave. It's a wrap on this edition of Closing Bell Markets Forward. Comes up next in just a bit. Stay with us.